Sports Today career. The perfect combination, boy. Camp on Legends in the South. This is sports fans only home for the hottest sports show around. These guys are on fire. You're now listening to KJ and Sean Mack. Welcome back to Sports Fans Only. I hope everybody out there had a beautiful week. This is a Sports Fans Only short documentary brought to you by KJ, your boy. Uh, what you were just seeing is our official clothing line, SFO, which you can find at www.sportsfansonly.store for all the latest in sportswear for men, women, and kids. Once again, that's www.sportsfansonly.store. Now that that's out of the way, I hope everyone's staying warm. Hope you guys are bracing for this snowstorm if you're living in the Northeast. For those who live up here, uh, can we say TGIF, please? TGIF, do you guys remember that show? Or not really a show, it was a segment, a block of time where they had a bunch of shows. It was on, what was it, UPN9 or WB11? Wherever you were, I don't know what the channel was. It was either UPN or WB. I think it was UPN, not sure. Uh, whatever it was, that was like the cornerstone of my youth. Not my childhood, my youth. You know, like middle school years, high school years, stuff like that. Uh, what did you have? Uh, you had your Saturday morning cartoons and you had TGIF. Those two things had to be seen during those years. We had shows like Moesha on TGIF, Dinosaurs, the Not The Mama. I know you remember him. Uh, Perfect Strangers, Family Matters, there was a few others. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked as usual. So the real reason we are here is because of the NFC and AFC championships that are going down on Sunday. So all topics for the most part for the next couple weeks leading into the Super Bowl will be 95% football based. Uh, C. Anthony, of course, will keep bringing his boxing. You're going to get some MMA from uh, Harry Bridge. He's the new member. Well, he's been around, but you guys are just seeing him. He was on the SK debate, so you're going to be seeing a lot more of him. He's going to be coming with some MMA videos. He's into mixed martial arts, so he's going to bring some of that stuff along with uh, Jean Renaud and his business fans only. Um, quick question from our real official SFO Dog Pound members. That's, that's what we're going to call the people that are in the comment box all the time. And my man, Marty Martin... What's good, Marty? Uh, he is our captain of the SFO Dog Pound members team. So anyway, uh, who do you guys think is going to the Super Bowl? Anybody can leave a comment, by the way. Uh, I just know Martin will. Um, yeah, so who do you guys think is going to win the Super Bowl on February 13th? By the way, we will be in New Canaan. I forget the name of the restaurant, but we'll be there doing a live show. So you guys want to check in for that uh, from 1 to 3 before the Super Bowl, so if you want to check that out, um, I'll get this, the name of the restaurant from uh, Sean Mack. We'll repeat this on the show on Sunday. Um, I already have the 49ers going, and I have the Chiefs, although I want the Bengals to win. I'm hoping that's the way it goes. I hope the Bengals beat them and it's 49ers against the Bengals, but my heart is saying, no, my head is saying that it's going to be the Chiefs, so... Uh, 49ers against the Chiefs, and I am saying that the 49ers are going to get their revenge from a couple of years ago, and they're going to win the game. Uh, but in honor of championship weekend, I wanted to highlight one of my favorite players of all time who happens to be in the Kansas City Chiefs Hall of Fame. Now, kids, I know you think Derrick Henry is a beast, and rightfully so. The man is a walking wildebeest. But this man I'm about to talk about, he eats multiple wildebeests for snacks in between meals and that man's name is Christian the Nigerian Nightmare Okoye. Now some of our younger fans may be asking themselves who the hell is Christian Okoye? By the way if you're 40 plus and you don't know this man's greatness and call yourself a sports fan shame on you. But anyway that's neither here nor there. 
This man was a flat out man amongst boys. And before we get into the fear he put into NFL defensive linemen and linebackers and cornerbacks, especially cornerbacks, I don't even know how you begin to try to tackle this man. I want to go back further into time with uh, Christian Okoye when he first came to this country and retraced his football journey. Uh, it's an improbable journey that resulted in a short yet spectacular career. If you blinked, you probably missed the anomaly. That is the Nigerian nightmare. He was basically the Thanos of the NFL. Now, just for some context, so I can shed the proper light on this man's greatness through the proper lens, here are some other running backs who had similar traits as Christian Okoye. Uh, they played at different times in the NFL, so I'm just gonna name them off. You had Jim Brown, he was six foot two, 230 pounds. He ran a 4.5 in the 40 yard dash, bench 400 pounds, that was his max. He squatted 550 pounds. Derrick Henry, six foot three, 247 pounds, ran a 4.54 in the 40 yard dash. He benched 440 pounds and he squatted 500 pounds. Eddie George, six foot three, 240 pounds. He ran a 4.49, he bench pressed 400 pounds and he squatted 500 pounds. Mike Allstott, I know you guys remember him. He was like a tank. He was six foot one, 240 pounds. He bench pressed 545 pounds. He ran a 4.66 in the 40 yard dash and he squatted 575 pounds. Jerome Bettis, the bus, he was 5'11". He weighed 251 pounds. He ran a 4.7 in the 40 yard dash, bench pressed 480 pounds, and he squatted 450 pounds. And last but not least, Christian Okoye. Six foot one, he's the heaviest out of all of them. He was 260 pounds when he, that was his playing weight. And he ran a 4.38 faster than all of them by a good margin uh, when, you, when you think about 40 yard dashes. He bench pressed 405 pounds and get this, he squatted 725 pounds. That's how much he squatted as a rookie. Absolutely beastly. In 1987, as the NFL was building up momentum to overthrow the MLB as America's favorite sport. Now, if you remember, baseball was the shiznick back in 1987. It was all about, that was right after the Mets won the World Series. Um, the Cardinals were really good. Kansas City Royals, uh, Minnesota Twins. Leading into the 90s, you had Toronto and that whole thing. Um, it was just, baseball was still America's sport. But coming in a close second was the NFL at that time. And they were definitely building up momentum to overthrow the MLB, which they did in the mid nineties. So uh, in that era, you had a phenom known as Christian Okoye. The players, nobody was ready for the Nigerian nightmare. But as that season began in 1987, the world was about to be put on notice. This man-child from the motherland was about to unleash this Thanos-like physique upon the entire NFL and strike fear into opposing defenses. In the second round of the 1987 draft, Kansas City selected Christian Okoye from tiny Azusa Pacific University. Okoye would quickly become one of the league's most popular players as the Nigerian Nightmare. Although his career was short, Okoye is still remembered for his thunderous runs and his powerful frame. Christian Emeka Okoye was born on August 16, 1961 in Anuga, Nigeria. He is a member of the Igbo ethnic group, a group that can also be found in present-day Cameroon, Gabon, and Equatorial Guinea. Growing up in Nigeria, Okoye was enamored with sports. He participated in soccer as well as track and field. In his late teens, Okoye stopped playing soccer to concentrate on his track events. His ability in throwing events, discus, shot put, hammer, helped him get a scholarship at Azusa Pacific University in Azusa, California in 1983. Part of Okoye's decision to attend APU was to prepare for the 1984 Olympics. After arriving in the States, Okoye was coached by Dr. Terry Franson. Under Franson's tutelage, Okoye excelled. In four years, he helped the APU to four NAIA track and field titles. In addition to the titles, Okoye won seven titles combined in the discus, hammer throw, and shot put. He was the first athlete in NAIA history to win the discus four years running. In 1985, Okoye set an NAIA record with a throw of 
208 feet and 4 inches in the discus. The following year, he was named NAIA's most outstanding performer for his performance in the outdoor championships after he won both the shot put and discus. Okoye also did well on the indoor circuit, twice being named the NAIA champion for his shot and discus ability. In the lead-up to the 1984 Olympics, Okoye had throw marks necessary to compete for Nigeria. However, the Nigerian government decided not to include Okoye on his team. The news crushed Okoye and he decided to pursue a different outlet for his frustrations. During his time at Azusa, Okoye continued to compete in track, but he also discovered football. When he initially saw a game, Okoye thought the sport was rather boring. However, even though he had never played the sport, he believed he might be able to do fairly well given his strength and athletic ability. Before going out for the team, Okoye sought Franson's permission. Knowing Okoye was left off the Nigerian Olympic team, Franson gave his blessing. Next was the matter of choosing a position to try out for. I told Coach Mihon, I said, I, I saw this thing on the news where this guy from the Redders came around and ran a long ways to score a touchdown. Uh, I said, who was that? He said, Marcus Allen. So said, what position is that? He told me, running back. I said, that's the position I want. I laid out 40 yards on the grass up there, and I said, let's see physically what we have. His first time that he ran for me in the 40 was 438. He had the physical tools, but everything else he had to learn. To the coach's amazement, Okoye blazed through the finish line in a time of 4.38 seconds. Not only was the time remarkable, but the fact that Okoye accomplished the feat at 6 foot 1, 260 pounds was astounding. Now that Okoye had his position selected, he had to learn the nuances of the game. With help from his coaches and fellow players, Okoye slowly but surely figured out the sport. There were a few hiccups, of course. For example, when he first scored a touchdown, Okoye was not sure what to do. He stood still in the end zone until a referee asked him for the ball. There were times when Okoye considered giving up football. Despite his size, he did not like the physical aspect of the game. Thankfully, Franson, teammates and friends talked him out of quitting. By the time his eligibility at APU ended, Okoye was one of the best small college backs in America. He set 14 program records for APU and led the nation with 186.7 rushing yards per game in 1986. Even with his accomplishments, Okoye was not selected for any postseason All-Star games after the 86 season. That changed when a running back slated to play in the Senior Bowl chose not to attend. Okoye was asked to play in his place and he jumped at the opportunity. Though he was playing on an injured ankle, Okoye rushed for four touchdowns during the game. That is still a record that stands. Okoye's play in the Senior Bowl raised eyebrows. Among the raised brows were members of the Kansas City Chiefs coaching staff. They brought word back to their bosses and the entire staff poured over stats and film of Okoye for the next few months. There was the issue that the young back was still learning the game and that he had played at a tiny school. However, his skills were undeniable. With the 35th pick overall of the second round in the 1987 NFL Draft, the Chiefs selected Okoye. Not long after arriving in KC, they blow the whistle. You can keep playing. I mean, <laughs> I mean, look out! Boom! You can still get it. I mean, what? And then 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 what? Okoye was timed in the 40 again. Mouths flew open when Okoye's time was announced at 4.45 seconds. He's an unbelievable player. I mean, it, you know, you know the great gods, you know, he's one step above that. I mean, boom! <laughs> I mean, I'm out of there right now! The teammates marveled at the specimen before them. Not only was Okoye fast, his size was impressive. At the time, he had a 34-inch waist. And then, and then, and then, and then, 20-inch thighs. 28 inch size, I'm sorry. Anytime you're at a place like this, you think, <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, things start to get. Okoye could squat 725 pounds, as I mentioned before, bench press 405 pounds, and, then, what? and, then, what? and power clean 395 pounds. During his rookie year, Okoye wait, 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 became wait, wait, an instant hit. He started 12 games and rushed for 660 yards on 157 carries and scored three rushing touchdowns. It used to be where you couldn't get hit, but now, <laughs> look out, people are still coming for me. <laughs> Okoye proved a light touch as a receiver as well as he hauled in 24 passes for 169 yards. The Chiefs in 1987 were not very good, ending the year at 4-11. Boom! <laughs> I mean, I'm out of it right now, man! One of the lone bright spots was Okoye, who ran over, threw, and around opponents. In his first season, each opponent took a moment when taking in the sight of the Chiefs running back. It didn't take long before they did their best to steer clear of him during the game. That could be a potential hazard to people, but at the same time, you've seen a guy lose the ball. 
Here's a quote from former Seahawk Bronco Dave Wyman. And I quote, They, the Kansas City Chiefs, had a huge offensive line in those days, too. They had Barry Ward, who wasn't much smaller than Okoye, the left tackle. John Alt was six foot eight. They had David Zott, who was a really good Pro Bowl caliber guard. If you got a stalemate and were able to get off a block, here comes 265, 260 pounds running fast. Okoye was just a freaking monster. End quote. In 1988, Okoye battled a thumb injury and played in only nine games. His numbers fell to 473 rushing yards with three scores and eight receptions for 51 yards. The Chiefs went 4-11-1, and, and head coach Frank Gans was fired at the end of the year. With the departure of Gans, Gans, I'm hoping I'm saying his name right, the Kansas City Brass were looking for someone to turn the fortunes around for their club. Meanwhile, coach Marty Schottenheimer was leaving Cleveland despite taking the Browns to back-to-back AFC championships in 1986 and 1987. The Chiefs didn't waste any time and quickly hired Schottenheimer. The turnaround was immediate and the Kansas City Chiefs benefited from Schottenheimer. During the 1989 season, the Chiefs went 8-7-1 but did not make the playoffs. Okoye enjoyed his best season as a pro when he led the league with 370, 370 carries and 1,480 yards. He also scored 12 touchdowns as well. After the season, Okoye was named the AFC's Offensive Player of the Year, a first-team All-Pro and was voted to his first Pro Bowl. 1990 was shaping up to be a big year for Kansas City. That year, the team rode both Okoye and Barry Ward, who would receive Comeback Player of the Year after his 1,015 yards for the season. Because of Ward, Okoye's role was reduced slightly. He still rushed for 805 yards and 7 touchdowns in 1990. By then, Okoye's origin story and bruising running style had brought him fame throughout the league and birthed the nickname, the Nigerian Nightmare. There was no denying that, even though he was still learning the game, Okoye was a load to bring down the field. An ooh of a different kind occurred during the Chiefs' Week 2 game against the Denver Broncos. Now, as a, I'm, I'm sure you know, the oohs were usually because Christian Okoye was running people over, violently, I might add. But this day, the ooh and the ahs were for a different reason. The game was tight and would end with the Broncos winning 24-3. At one point during this contest, Okoye took a handoff and was skirting through the hole in the Chiefs line. Suddenly, Broncos safety Steve Atwater arrived and planted Okoye on his back. If you have not seen this, and I'm, I, I just showed a little clip, but if you go back and look at the original game footage of that, I've never seen a man that big get hit that hard. It was like as soon as the contact and, and, and Steve Water was standing over him. It, it was actually, it was, it was amazing. It really was. Hardest hit I've ever seen. Hardest hit I've ever seen him take. Now, Okoye would say Richard Dent hit him harder than anybody's ever hit him from the Chicago Bears. But from what I saw, it was Steve Atwater. And to this day, he doesn't really like talking about it. But I, I think he knows he got hit and he got stung. But in his defense, he did say when Richard Dent hit him, he couldn't feel the right side of his face when he got up. So I, I'll let you take that for what it is. Broncos fans went nuts at the sight of the huge Okoye being depleted by the lighter 6'3", 218-pound Steve Atwater. The play was shown over and over and over again on all these sports news outlets, and I'm pretty sure Okoye uh, didn't appreciate that. Uh, the Chiefs finished the 1990 season 11-5 and, and faced the Dolphins in the wild card round. KC led Miami 16-3 after three quarters. However, they couldn't hold on and they lost 17-16. In 1991, Okoye rushed for over 1,000 yards for the second time in his career. In addition to his 1,031 yards, Okoye also added nine rushing touchdowns. He was named to his second Pro Bowl and selected as a second-team All-Pro. After the Chiefs ended the year 10-6, and six, they squared off against their hated division rival, the Raiders, in the wild-card playoffs. KC used a running back tandem of Ward and Okoye to beat their rival with a score of 10-6. The following week, the team faced Buffalo and were run over 37-14. The constant pounding on Okoye's body was taking its toll by the 1992 season. Limited by injuries, he started only five games. His total for the year were 144 rushes for 448 yards and six touchdowns. Most of the Koye's carries in 1992 were near the goal line, and his last carry as a chief was an eight-yard touchdown run. K- 
Kansas City finished 10-6 and were blanked by the Chargers 17-0 in the wild card round. In Okoye's first two seasons in the NFL, his rushing attempts were 157 and 105 respectively. During the next three seasons, he toted the rock 370 times, 245 times, and 225 times. Schottenheimer was a coach known for his belief in a strong running game. However, that philosophy turned out to be a detriment to Okoye's body. Okoye came back for the 1993 season, but was clearly beset by injuries. Before the 1993 season began, Kansas City placed him on injury reserve. He then underwent surgery on both knees and the Chiefs released him with an injury settlement. Okoye committed himself to rehab and intended to try out for other teams. However, he began to see football more as a job and decided to retire. In just six seasons, Okoye rushed for 4,897 yards and 1,246 attempts and 40 touchdowns. At the time of his retirement, Okoye was the all-time Chiefs rushing leader. His totals have since been surpassed by Priest Holmes, Marcus Allen, and Larry Johnson. After retiring, Okoye became an investor in the Golden Baseball League and owned Okoye Health and Fitness. He also runs the Christian Okoye Foundation, which helps Nigeria host sports clinics and underprivileged kids. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Um, this man was an absolute monster on the football field. Uh, such a nice guy by all, by all accounts as well. And he was my favorite running back. I started watching football around that time, actually. I was a baseball kid. I started getting into football around 1987. That would make me about nine years old. And he was my first favorite player, him and Bo Jackson. And also on Tecmo Bowl, which you saw earlier on the um, in the video, him and Bo Jackson were the two best running backs. They just broke tackles like crazy. It was ridiculous. So anyway, I wanted to highlight Christian Okoye because, of course, the Chiefs are playing in the AFC Championship. And like I said, I wanted to highlight one player. So he was my favorite player on that team. Next week, I will highlight somebody from another team who's going to be in the Super Bowl. So uh, we'll see who that will be in the coming days. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Uh, if you're up here in the Northeast, make sure you drive safe, stay warm. It's going to be a lot of snow. Uh, if you're anywhere else, like my man Gary out there in Arizona, you lucky bastard. Um, I want to give a big shout out to my mother down there in Nashville. Not Nashville, actually Lebanon, which is about 45 minutes from Nashville. Big shout out to my mother. As always, a big shout out to my wife, my daughter, Sean Mack, Jean Renard, C. Anthony, all the Dog Pound members, the SFO Dog Pound members. I uh, just want to say love y'all. Big shout out. This is KJ. I'm signing out. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.